Hello guys and welcome to the first video of 2020 for sysadmin tutorials. First up, I just want to wish everyone a happy new year and I wish you all the best for 2020. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can join two existing vCenter servers with embedded platform services controller together to form an enhanced link mode. This video complements a blog post that I recently written and I'll be posting that link in the description below. Okay, let's take a look at our lab setup. So we have two vCenter servers set up. So vCenter A is going to be called vCloud PG VC A. And then we have vCenter B, which is called vCloud PG VC B. So as you can see on screen, this is how I've got my lab set up. And vCloud PG stands for vCloud Playground. So this is where I'm doing some testing and things like that for vCloud. Now let's take a look at our requirement. So our requirement is to join the two vCenters together to create an enhanced link mode. So once you've created an enhanced link mode, what you can do is log into your web UI. And within the web UI, you'll be able to see both vCenters there from your single plane of glass. Now up on screen, I have the two vCenter web UIs loaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to log into A and then we'll log into B and we'll just take a look at what is set up and what we can see inside at the moment. So I'll just enter in my credentials and this is in vCenter A. And as you can see, we've got the vCenter here and we've just got one data center. So at the moment for this lab, I don't have any clusters or ESXi hosts set up. Uh, all we're going to be demoing is how to join the two vCenters together. Now I'll move across into vCloud PG VC B. And we'll log in here. And as you can see here, we've got our, our vCenter object and we've also got a data center called PG B. So the process to join these two vCenter servers together is all done via CLI. So we need to establish an SSH session to the vCenter server. And the vCenter server that we're going to be doing that to is going to be on B. So we're going to be joining vCenter B to vCenter A. And then we can log into either one of those and we'll be able to see both vCenters within the web UI. So now I'm going to establish a SSH session into my vCenter B. And I'll log in. The command that we're going to be using to perform this operation is called cmsso-util space domain dash repoint. So this is only available since vCenter 6.7 update 1. Both my lab environments are running vCenter 6.7 update 3. So as long as you're running update 1, uh, you'll be able to use this technique. Before we perform the actual domain repoint, we're going to be running a pre-check. And that's going to check both vCenters, make sure everything's okay. And it's also going to let us know if there is any conflicts at all. And we'll be able to see that in a file. So I'm going to show you that shortly. But for now, the command line that we need to enter into here to run the pre-check is... I'll just expand the window a little bit. So you can see the command up on screen here. It's cmsso-util space domain dash repoint and then we have the mode so we're running it in pre-check mode so this is going to check that make sure everything's okay and let us know of any conflicts and the source admin is called administrator so this is purely for authentication the replication partner is vcloud pg vca so remember we're performing this on b and we're going to be connecting b to a so therefore our replication partner here is vcenter a the replication partner admin, so this is credentials, remember? This is uh, administrator. And then we have the destination domain. So the destination domain is vSphere.local. And also the domain that I'm running in vCloud B is also vSphere.local. So at the moment we have two vSphere.local domains. And basically we're going to be joining them and it'll be one big vSphere.local domain. So we can press enter on this command and run the pre-check. We're prompted for the administrator password of the source vCenter server. So I'll enter that now and press enter. And then we'll need to enter in the password for the replication partner. So this is to vCenter A now. So I'll enter in that password. Up on screen, we have the output of the domain repoint pre-check. And there's just a few things that I want to highlight here under the warning section. So the first up being that global permissions from the source vCenter server are going to be lost. 
So my source vCenter server is vCloud PG-VC-B and any global permissions that I have within that vCenter server are going to need to be reset up once the two vCenter servers have joined together. The other thing to note is the default resolution mode for tags and authorization conflicts is copy. So I'm going to be leaving that, I'm not going to be touching that. However, you can change the config files to overwrite if you have a conflict in between tags, for example. But uh, we're going to be leaving this one as copy. The next warning is to do with plugins. So if you have any plugins installed in your source vCenter server, once we perform the domain rejoin and the enhanced link mode setup, you're going to need to re-register those plugins. The last point to go through is please ensure that you have a vCenter server backup. So what I've done in my lab is I've shut down both vCenter servers. I've then taken a snapshot of both of those and now I've powered them back up and we're ready to run the domain repoint command. Again, just to mention, both of my vCenter servers are running uh, VCSA, their appliance. So the databases are contained within the VCSA appliance. So when I do do that snapshot backup, it does contain the, the database backup. However, if you do have external databases running, please also ensure that you've backed up those databases as well uh, before performing this operation. So I'm going to press Y here and we're going to perform the pre-check. You can see up on screen that our pre-check is successful and you can also see up on screen here that our conflict information is stored under slash storage slash domain dash data slash conflict star dot json files. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to browse to that directory and we're going to take a look and see what conflicts we have. To browse to the directory I need to jump into the shell mode. So here I'm going to type in shell enter. And we'll go change directory into storage slash domain dash data. And we'll perform an ls. So we can see here that we've got conflict underscore roles dot json. So I'm going to use vi to take a look into that file and see what conflicts we have. To do that I simply type vi and then followed by the file name. As you can see up on screen here, we have two conflicts and that is with the vsan.dataprotection.management privilege. And if you remember before, the default resolution used, if there is a conflict, is to perform a copy. So that's what that's going to do for these two privileges. And what I'll do is I'm going to quit out of VI. So to do that, I do colon Q exclamation mark. And we can exit the shell by typing exit. And we're now ready to run the domain repoint. So I'm going to be copying the command into the CLI window here. And this command is pretty much exactly the same as the command we entered in for the pre-check. The only difference for this command is that we've got the dash dash mode switch set to execute. So that means it's actually going to perform the domain repoint now. So I'm going to press enter. And once again, it's going to ask for the source and destination administrator password. So I'll enter those in. We're presented with the same warning that we got when we ran the pre-check. So just double check, make sure everything is okay here. And if you're happy to proceed, press Y and enter. And the domain repoint is underway. Okay, as you can see on screen now that the domain repoint has completed successfully. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump back into the shell of my vCenter B. And I'm going to change into the following directory. Slash USR slash LIB slash VMware dash VMDIR slash bin. Within this directory, we're going to be running a command called VDC rep admin. Now what this command is going to do, it's going to show the replication partners for this local vCenter server. So I'll press enter here. Sorry, I just got a typo on this one. So I'll just up arrow and I'll just change this. So it's supposed to be localhost. Okay, and we'll press enter. And we can see here that our replication partner is vCloud PG VC-A, which is correct. So now we're going to head on over to our web UI and we're going to take a look at what enhanced link mode looks like. I'll log in with my administrator username and password. And we can see here on the left hand side that we have a single plane of glass displaying both vCenter servers. And if I just make sure that my vCenter B server is highlighted here on the left, 
On the right hand side, if I click on the tab entitled Link to vCenter Server Systems, we can see that our Link to vCenter server is vCloud PG VC A. And I'll just expand VCA as well. We can see that the data center is there as we showed in the beginning of this video. And what I'll do is I'll log out of our vCenter B. And I'm going to go over to vCenter A, log into the web UI, and we're going to see exactly the same thing as what we saw on vCenter B. I'll log in here with my administrator username and password. And there we have it on the left hand side, we've got two vCenter servers. So we've got our vCenter A and our vCenter B. But this time if I click on vCenter A, and on the right hand side I click on the tab linked to vCenter server systems, we're going to see vCloud PG-VC-B vCenter server here. So that completes this tutorial on how to set up enhanced linked mode with an existing vCenter server setup with embedded platform services controller. I hope you, that you found it interesting and if you have any comments whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best at answering those as quick as I can. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these videos. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a great 2020 and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.